Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. Okay, this is going to be fun for me. <laughs> I hope it's fun for you too. So this video is going to be all about reversals, but mostly testing myself on my knowledge of reversals. So before we start the experiment and the test, I want to talk about a few things. So first, um, let's talk about the fact that I do not read reversals. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that I don't read reversals in a traditional sense in that I do not have my cards flipped upside down um, in any of my spreads and readings. So that's what I mean when I say I do not read reversals. Um, that does not mean, however, that I do not have a like full, well-rounded understanding of the card meanings. So that leads me into point number two. And my point, uh, my second point here that I kind of want to get across before I do this experiment is that I believe the way that I read the tarot, the way that I see the tarot meanings is that the cards, each card contains within it a, you know, a spectrum or a, uh, yeah, like a spectrum of meaning. And that can range from positive to negative to somewhere in between. It's like, um, it's, it's the card itself is not inherently positive or negative. Um, just like people, I think, <laughs> are not inherently good or bad. Um, it's nuanced, it is um, complex um, and simple, <laughs> simple and complex. It's, you know, it's a various, a variety of different things. And depending upon the question posed by the querent or, you know, yourself, if you're the, the person who the reading is for, um, depending upon the question that is, that is posed to the cards, um, depending upon the spread positions used. So if you're using a spread that has predetermined, um, titles, keywords, questions, and of themselves, um, it, that can change, that can make the meaning of the card, you know, skew perhaps one way or the other in terms of whether it's positive or negative or good or bad. Um, you know, but that is also up for interpretation depending upon what it is that we're answering, what it is that the message um, is saying. Um, so a message that might seem positive or good to one person could seem negative and, you know, um, challenging or difficult to someone else. And so, yeah, so I believe that there's a lot of nuance involved in this type of um, topic. And Three, I want to mention, so the, the, my third point is that um, there's a lot, there are a lot of videos out there about this particular topic for beginners who are wondering if they want to read reversals or not read reversals and what all that means. And I'm just giving like a brief kind of this kind of brief overview here because really this video is going to be about me testing myself and my own knowledge. Um, so that's my third point, that there are videos out there. So if you want like a more thorough explanation of that, then, um, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to find some to link below um, so that you can, you can check that out. And then finally, a point that I want to make is that there are so many different ways to in, to interpret what a reversal is. Um, I, I think Lisa did a really good video about this, so I'm going to, I'll find that one and point you to that if you haven't already seen it, um, where she talked about like several different ways that a card's reversed meaning can be interpreted, whether it's, um, you can see it as the opposite 
of the upright meaning, whether you can see it as the shadow side of the upright meaning. Some people think of it as a blockage of that energy of the upright energy. Um, there are there are lots of different ways um, that that can be interpreted. And I don't think I subscribe to any particular way. Like, I don't know that I see it as um, the opposite or a blockage, or I don't think I ever read um, the more negative undertones of a of a card um, in any one particular way every single time. So for me, a reading is always different. It's always nuanced. There's always different layers and things that I'm picking from um, and choosing from. Um, and it sort of just kind of comes through me when I read. And so I don't, um, I don't have the same approach to this idea every single time. That's just m my way. Um, and then, la uh, so that was, I was saying that that was finally, but that's not finally. I'm going to have another final point before I do this experiment. <laughs> um, my final point is I just want to give an, a couple of examples of <clears throat> how um how we read how we read the cards um and when you're first starting out like me I'm not I really am not um a expert or super veteran seasoned tarot reader I've been doing this for a couple of years um but I've been in, in interested in the tarot for much longer um than that but in any case like when you're first starting out keywords is your main go-to understanding of a card and so when you get when you kind of lock yourself into a keyword that usually is the upright meaning is what you learn first then it's re it's difficult kind of to to change that right so for example let's think about a card that it that seems like um has inherently like light or positive or good a good card a card that if you were saying is yes or no you would say is a yes card so let's take the example of the sun being a positive card and that's just kind of like one of those cards that like especially if you're using Wait smith um even thoughts <laughs> um that it's just you know upon looking at it the depictions of it um, thinking about the you know the sun itself and what it means to us as humans as a symbol as a metaphor as a theme um in ancient times you know like through human history like and so on and so forth the sun is a symbol of life the sun is a symbol of happiness the sun is um you know it feels like a good thing when you get the sun because probably the, the keyword I've seen the most for the sun is happiness. Um, it also, you know, can mean authenticity, um, you know, being your true self, uh, that sort of thing. And it's upright, you know, what's considered its upright meaning. But you have to, so, so the idea of understanding reversals is that you have to be able to step outside of that um, that meaning to understand that there is, uh, there are varying degrees of positivity <laughs> to that card, and it's going to depend on the reading itself. But if the car, but if the sun comes up in a negative as the answer for like a, a bit of a negative question, like what's my obstacle, or what is the challenge in this situation, or what you know, um, what is, I mean, I'm just thinking like really straight up, you know, what is harmful to me, what, you know, what do I need to think, what do I need to change? Something like that, right? If the sun comes up, it's a head scratcher, right? For people that are new to tarot, because you're wondering, what th does this mean? And so it's a good exercise to take a look at those cards that feel like inherently positive and see what that shadow or opposite or blockage or reverse meaning could be. So for example, you know, stay like, I'm just like giving like a, like a anecdotal kind of example. 
you know, I live somewhere where it's really sunny all the time. <laughs> and sometimes too much sun is like, can skew your perception, right? So like nothing is always sunny all the time. And if you are only ever looking for the sunny side, then you might be doing yourself a disservice, right? You might be um, that might be a, a negative or reverse meaning of the sun. Um, it could you could also think of it as like um, you are being too idealistic or too innocent. You know, when you think of that baby on the on the horse on the white horse, you know, maybe you're thinking of things in a too idealistic way, and that's the negative aspect. Or perhaps you are um, unable to see what truly makes you happy. That could be another way to interpret a negative sort of aspect of getting of getting the sun card. Of course, like I said, that's going to depend on the reading, the context, the question, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something you know to think about in terms of when you receive a like a inherently, and I keep using air quotes because inherently positive, you know, yes card, right? Now on the flip side of that, haha, you like my pun there. On the other side of that, there are cards that we deem inherently negative or bad or, you know, you don't like to see it, right? And there's there's several of those throughout the tarot. Um, and let's just use one that kind of everybody, you know, agrees on. We'll use a major as well, the tower, right? So if the sun is like that major card that's like, yes then the tower is that major card that's like, no, <laughs> no, and it's scary, um, and so on. So you, I, and I bring up the tower because I have myself ha have gotten the tower as an answer to a question that seems like a, like a positive thing. So it's, again, it's a head scratcher. So like, I, I talked about this in another one of my videos, but I got the tower card I pulled once recently as an answer to what bring what will bring you joy the tower and it's like whoa you know when you first get that you know and as somebody who's new who's very latched onto and locked into you know your keyword meaning of the tower being dis destruction um and things you know coming completely falling apart a kind of you know, cataclysmic event in your life. Um, it's, that's like, what, you know? Um, so it's, you know, it made me, um, look at the tower again, uh, for it's for the other, you know, the, for the wide range of spectrum in terms of the meaning of that card. And well, for me, when I thought about it, like bringing me joy, you know, the, the tower also has a lot to do with your own ego and breaking down and destroying your own ego. And that, you know, and sometimes completely deconstructing something in your life, an idea, um, a, um, a way of thinking, a even a situation, a relationship, a you know work situation, whatever it may be, like deconstructing something and like you know getting rid of it and move and then and then rebuilding because there's an aspect of rebuilding as well in the tower. That is um, that is another way to look at it. That could be a good thing, could be positive, could bring you joy, right? Could bring a person joy. So <laughs> having said all that, those are the things that I wanted to kind of put out there to discuss before I get into this experiment. So now let's have some fun. So what I've done and what I'd like to do, um, well, what I've done first is I grabbed three different tarot, or three different decks. I grabbed a standard um, Waite Smith clone, which is my favorite one, and probably the deck that I'm most familiar with. So this is the Morgan Greer Tarot. This is the um, vintage, the vintage um, 1979, I believe, um, printing of it. But this deck is 
um, readily available. There's tin version, there's a standard version. So this is just my go-to and I grabbed this because this is probably the most, the deck that I'm most familiar with and have probably used the most. So I feel like if I'm going to get into that nuanced reverse, you know, um, card messages, this would be a good one. I also grabbed the um, Sasurai Bito Tarot, and this is also a deck that I've had for quite some time that I used at the beginning of my tarot journey. And this is a deck that I know some of the cards, um, especially like the Sun card in this deck specifically, um, made me think in that, in that way, in that more nuanced spectrum way where you can read, you know, uh, you can read, I'm doing this because that's my universal sign for spectrum. Um, you can read the card in various different ways that could seem positive or could seem negative. So I grabbed that to test myself. And then I grabbed, this is just the, the, the guidebook because I don't have the box anymore for the Untamed Spirit Animal Oracle. And I grabbed an oracle to help me out in case I need it, <laughs> to help me see. And this is, um, this is a good one because it has, I'll just show it real quickly. Um, this is a good one to use because, well, it's black and white. So, and then it has several keywords on it, usually two, maybe sometimes three I've seen. Um, and it, I feel like if I'm getting, if I get stuck, I can grab the, um, the Oracle and see if it can help me kind of, um, investigate and suss out the, the reversal meaning if I'm, if I get in a jam here. Um, and I might, even if I'm not in a jam, I might kind of pull it anyway, um, to help me clarify or just for funsies. So that's what we've done. So I'm going to start out with this, you know, like what, what seems like it'll be easy <laughs> to pull out. Um, and then um, I'm going to try it with an indie deck as well. And then we also have our Oracle to kind of, you know, help us, help me if I need it. Okay. So this test is literally just going to be me pulling one card and giving the reversed, um, the reversed, the shadow or the testing my knowledge of the reverse, the shadow, the blockage, the negative aspect of that card. Um, and we're going to do it one card at a time, even though, you know, most of the time I read in the context of several different cards in front of me. We're just going to test this out, see how I do <laughs> uh, with one card at a time. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to say before I start pulling the cards themselves is I, I wanted to say that I'm going to try to keep in mind those two questions that I used as kind of a way to help. Um, to help suss out like upright versus, you know, reverse meanings um, in in terms of a, of a reading. So if I need to, I'll draw upon those questions. And the question for like a negative would be, you know, uh, what is my obstacle? And then a question for, you know, like a positive would be what brings me joy? So what is my obstacle? What brings me joy? And if I need to kind of think in those terms to help me pull out the reversed meaning of the card, then we'll go ahead and do that. But let's just sort of, you know, I shuffled and I'm going to, I'm going to draw a card and see what, how we go. Okay. So, oh, that's so funny that it, that I flipped it reversed, <laughs> but we're going to put it upright just to take a look at him. Okay. So the King of Rods, so the King of Rods in a, you know, as a reversal, um, as a challenge, as an obstacle, um, as something, a difficulty, the King of Rods can be really overbearing. Um, and so that's how I would read it. If I'm talking about a reversal, King of Rods can be way too demanding. Um, they are, it's, you know, the fire, the fire suit. So ha the King of Rods has a temper. The King of Rods can be maybe rate, you know, have some rage and anger. Um, in them. And so the reverse for me of the King of Rods would be, yeah, those would be like the words that come to mind. Um, rage, anger, um, demanding, 
uh, you know, sort of oblivious to feelings in pursuit of their own, um, in pursuit of their own, you know, passion, maybe selfish um, and overbearing. So that's what I would think of, uh, you know, mean, just kind of mean, like mean. Um, that's how I would think of challenge uh, of the reversal. Okay, let's try another one. So here we have the 10 of pentacles. So the 10 of pentacles in a, um, as an obstacle or as a challenge, um, something, you know, kind of negative or reversed or blocked. I guess I would see it as blocked because I'm, I'm getting that just because of the X, right? Um, in this particular, um, depiction of the 10 of pentacles, I would say that if this is come, if this comes up as a reversal or this is the shadow meaning of the card that ends up in your reading, it would be that the energy of the 10 of pentacles is blocked. Being able to be forward thinking and seeing your future, your legacy, your, um, you know, your what you need to be preparing for for future generations um is blocked like i would say that you cannot see that and that's how i would read that all right let's grab another card let me see if i can do these quicker so we have the hangman um so the hangman as a reversal so the gosh the hangman is such a nuanced card like it's not easy like you know, the, you could see the traditional ways of reading the hangman as like a timeout or shift in perspective as something positive, but you could read that like that idea itself could be something negative for someone who is like, things are fine. Why do, why do I need to shift my perspective? That doesn't seem right. Shifting my perspective seems like a challenge, you know? There's also in the hangman a sacrificial, um, like a sacrifice, a, a, a um, metaphor, you know, and like a, the narrative of like the a messiah type quality. Um, Odin ha is one of the figures that I've seen represented as the hangman before who sacrificed himself for humanity. You can think of it that way, you know, like in a in the Christian sense too, like Jesus, Messiah, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I don't mean to say blah, blah, blah like that, like I'm dismissing it. But yeah, there's a lot in the hangman that could be seen as, um, it's so funny, reverse because the hangman, right? <laughs> um, but the hangman, the shadow side of the hangman could be maybe being, you know, a, like having a martyr, um, a martyr attitude about things. Like you are, when you're not really being a martyr, that's another way to look at it in that, in the in the reversed way um the hanged man is also associated with the element of uh water and drowning is something um that's not positive right thinking of drowning uh so th th that's an association with the hanged man as well so there you go for kind of negative challenging things okay here we have the page of rods um so the page of rods, you know, typically may be seen as a positive, but they, um, as a personality type, this could be like the idealism and kind of singular passion, creative focus could be seen as something kind of annoying. Um, someone who is naive and maybe selfish in a different way, right, than the King of Rods was selfish. Like, the, the King of Rods can be selfish and, like, brutal, like, kind of mean. And um, Whereas the Page of Rods can be selfish and, like, this, like, oh, tra-la-la, kind of not even paying attention. Um, sort of just, like, oblivious to anybody else's needs because they're so focused on their own. All right. Um, death. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so now we're going to kind of, because death can is typically seen from a negative standpoint, right? And so we want to see the nuance of death. And like, and we'll use that kind of what brings me joy question rather than what's my challenge or what's my obstacle. So what brings me joy? And you pull the death card. Um, starting new. Um you know, if it's 
But death is definitely for me signifies the end of something, something ending. And it's that, you know, that memento mori kind of way to, un to, to, to live, right? That you know that things are finite, that there is an end, that things are always ending, that nothing ever stays the same. And perhaps it is a relief, um, depending on when this comes up in it, where this comes up and how this comes up in a reading, um, a relief that something has ended because it needed to, you know, that thing that ended needed to end. Um, whether it's a relationship, a friendship, a way of thinking, an idea, a project, um, you know, even a life. Um, which it doesn't usually, you know, typically mean like literal, um, but it does mean the end, you know, it does mean the end and the end sometimes is a really good thing. Like think of, you know, the end of a, of a really good book, you know, or a really good movie. Um, it needed to end because if, if it didn't end, that book wouldn't be good anymore, right? You'd, you'd get tired of it. <laughs> you'd get tired of it. Okay. So death. Let's do a couple more. Oh my gosh, Knight of Swords. This knight is really old for a knight. I love these mustaches on the Morgan Greer guys. Um, so the Knight of Swords, actually, um, I often hear a lot of folks interpret the Knight of Swords as something um, negative, right? Not positive, that the Knight of Swords comes swooping in and is like, um, you know, just kind of brutally honest and things like that. So. Let's think of it, this is the answer of what brings me joy because that might be, <laughs> that's the nuance, right? The upright meaning versus the reverse meaning. So I don't know that I'm sticking to like what you might see in a book, but because I think of the po like positive qualities about the Knight of Swords is that um, they are the type of person or this is the type of energy that is that can um, communicate very freely and very easily. Um, that is someone who uh, can like jump in and kind of solve problems quickly um, and who is brave in, in that sort of way. Like I'm thinking of it, you know, out of this medieval kind of um, out of this medieval kind of landscape and more in like a, you know, business type of way, um, or even in an interpersonal, like this is the type of person who can easily distinguish, you know, what the problem is, like can intellectualize it and, and, and solve it and like communicate it and get across their thoughts very freely. Um, so yeah, so that may be like the positive side, I guess this, you know, negative is, is the, the opposite of that or that thing being kind of blocked. Um, the opposite of that would be like, you know, not knowing when to shut up, not, you know, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Okay. Um, nine of pentacles. So the reverse of the nine of pentacles. So being too codependent, um, is what I immediately think of, um, being, not being able to stand on your own two feet and needing other people to provide for you. Okay. So that is that is using, I've done a few with the Morgan Greer. Let's try with the Sasaribito tarot and see how I do with reversals for that. Typically in, you know, indie decks or, I mean, I don't know. We're just going to, we're saying that this is a deck that kind of goes um, away from your rider Waite smith image. So now we have some more nuance to pick up in order to uh, read the reversed meaning. Okay, so we're going to test me on the Sassaribito tarot. Okay, so the Eight of Cups. Okay, so the reverse of this is that... <laughs> We are moving on and I love this depiction of the Eight of Cups so much. This feels 
very freeing. And even if um, you are moving on and getting rid of um, something that you might have loved, right? Because we're in the emotional space of the cups. It's a positive thing for you, you know? Um, it needs to happen. Like it's something that needs to happen. And this, this, um, this needs to happen. Okay. Eight of cups positively, I guess, or reversed. Three of wands. Okay. So three of wands. So the way that I'm reading this is that the three of wands upright is a very, it's a solid structure. It's that, um, it's that place where, things are are beginning um and you know the reversal of this is that th you don't know where to start like this is you know um not in place that there's you know and i'm and i'm using my intuition here now right because i'm looking at this fire here down below and thinking if this is the reversal or this energy is blocked, then in a reading, this is dangerous, you know, like this, um, not knowing how to start, how to, you know, begin, how to structure your ideas, how to put them together, how to put two things together to get a third, um, is, you know, it's bad and, and kind of starting without having, knowing what you're doing is going to, burn you. It's going to get you. <laughs> That's what I would say is the reversed. Okay. The King of Cups. Oh my goodness. I love this King of Cups and the Sassari Vito so much. So, um, I would see this in a reverse meaning as that this energy is being blocked or you're unable to kind of discover it in your own life. So if you get the King of Cups as an obstacle, for me, this means that you are not um, emotionally stable. You are not giving compassion. You are not able to be in a, like, in a space. You, you, you're not, you're not feeling well enough to give of yourself t at all to someone else. That's how I would read that as a reversal. Okay, a couple more. Ten of Cups as a reversal. Okay, the Ten of Cups reversed would mean um, loneliness and um, an inability to connect with other people uh, on an emotional level. So now I'm just trying to going trying to go faster. The ten, oh here we go the ten of pentacles reversed we got it on the other in the other way uh, or in the other deck and I said that that would be a blockage of that energy and here I would read the obstacle of the ten of pentacles isn't um I'm using you know I'm using the artwork now too and my intuition to help me that like there's no sense of priorities here like what comes first what needs to be connected what needs to be moving around you, what needs to be your top priority for your future is not, um, like this person, if the, you know, if this is a negative or reverse, um, shadow of this in a reading, I would say that this person doesn't, um, doesn't have their priorities in order. They don't know, um, what comes first, um, to help them with their own future. All right, one more, because I haven't even used the Oracle, the Hierophant. Okay, so some people read the Hierophant almost immediately as negative these days because the Hierophant, mm, because the Hierophant can symbolize, you know, tradition, the church, and things that um, feel very negative to some people who um, have a spirituality that is outside of what's considered conventional and traditional. So, um, the Hierophant I often see as a conduit. Um, so perhaps a reversed or difficulty or blockage or whatever negative meaning could mean that there is, um, like the messages from that conduit to, from the earthly to the otherworldly, 
um, is blocked um, or their messages are not being well received, um, that you are not, um, you're definitely not in a space where you can be taught um, le learning lessons right now is very difficult and challenging for you. That's what I would say. Um, okay, let's do the lovers. <laughs> oh my goodness. So for me, this is a loss of, like a, um, a negative or reverse meaning of this card would be like a loss of identity into someone else. So you're so melded into another person, um, that you have a complete loss of your own self. And that is not, not necessarily, not necessarily pretty much, you know, not a healthy thing or a good thing for a person to do. All right. I have not needed, <laughs> I have not needed the, um, Oracle cards yet because I, I guess I, I guess I'm, I guess I understand my reversals. I can look at a card and see things. Um, I can see all the sides of things, which I'm pleasantly surprised that I've, uh, I feel confident in that. I wasn't sure if I would. So what we'll do is in the, to use this Oracle is we're going to let the keyword kind of guide us into what, um, a reversal. So we'll we'll pick the oracle card, okay? Instead of using it as a clarifier, we'll use it as a starting point. And then we'll do the opposite, okay? So we'll pick a card and then we'll we'll pick a um a tarot card next to it and we'll do the reversal that way. All right. So here we have owl, vision and silence. And we have the 9 of cups. Okay, so looking at these two words here on the oracle, if we're wanting to pull out something that feels, because <laughs> words now too, keywords can have, you know, connotations that are both positive and negative. It depends on how you read it. I remember, you know, I used to teach, <laughs> I used to teach SAT prep and there's, you know, in the verbal section of the SAT is a whole, um, it's a standardized test. I'm sorry if you don't know what the SAT is in, in other countries, but in the United States, the SAT is a a test of that high school to students take and, and that are entering college, they take the SAT um, and then colleges and universities use that score as a determination for whether or not they want to accept um, that student into their school. Okay, so sorry about what the SAT is, but there's a whole vocabulary section in the SAT, and one of the um, one of the exercises that we do is to assign a positive or a negative to a word, so that when you're doing analogies or you're trying to you know answer vocabulary questions, that you can get the opposite. You know, you can figure out what the opposite meaning would be. So, and that's something that's very um, it's a fun exercise in terms of when you're thinking about analogies. So if I looked at these two words and I had to immediately assign a positive or a negative connotation to them, I would say vision is positive and silence is negative. So let's take the word, um, uh, silence to get our reversed meaning here of the nine of cups. So if we look at the owl and we look at the nine of cups, and silence, I would say that like reading this reversed is that we, you know, whoever this reading is for are not able to express their own like dreams and wishes and hopes that this person is stifled in silence from recognizing maybe even from the, their own self, um, what their wishes are their hopes and wishes are um so yeah that's how i would read that let's do another one. Oh my god this is so much fun all right so let's take a elephant community and perseverance and we have the chariot okay so let's use let's take a look at these two words community and perseverance so both of these 
have, um, I would say, have an inherently positive kind of spin. Maybe community is a little bit more new neutral rather than um, positive uh, because community could be good or bad, right? But perseverance suggests that you are working through something and are persevering, like using your strength to get through something. So that would... That would skew a little bit positive to me. So community, let's take the word community here with the elephant and the chariot. Okay, oh my goodness. So look at this. I'm Now I'm just looking at the animals here as like my intuition is drawing me towards them. Gosh, because if we're, if community is our base here and the elephant, um, if you just think about the way an elephant moves versus the way this um, horse is moving, it seems like the elephant is steady, is knowledgeable, is slow paced and methodical, is um, steps with purpose, whereas this chariot horse seems wild and out of control, like completely rearing up, winning and out of control, whereas the elephant is crossing this water, you know, and it seems to have like very, to be very purposeful. So a reversal or negative nuance, you know, negative way to read about community and the chariot is that there is no, like you're, like you are, if this is a reading, you know, whomever this reading is for, this person is wildly lost in their community. Like either they don't know how to get, um, you know, connect with people or they're being like way too um, loud and, you know, um, just they're not, they don't have a direction. There's no purpose in what they're trying to do for their community. Um, or they just have no way to figure out how to connect in a purposeful way with people. And they just feel like just wild and lost and out of control. All right, let's do, let's do, let's do it the other way now. Let's pull the card, the, um, the tarot card, and then, and we'll use Morgan Greer this time. So we'll pull the tarot card and then we'll pull the Oracle card. So let's take a look first. Okay. So we have the world. So usually the world is read very positively. So like thinking of the reversal of the world would be, uh, maybe the opposite, right? So things are incomplete. You're not able to 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 finish to move on and to get that kind of like closure um but in what like how if i'm if i'm if something's incomplete if there's no closure like how do i know how do i know what that thing is how do i know um where that focus is so that's when we would pull our oracle card to help us and we have whale with imagination and emotional memory. So I guess I'm gonna use this, and instead of like looking at these words as negative or positive, I'm gonna say that um, if we're reading this reversed, this thing that is that does not have closure, that is not complete, that feels like, you know, um, icky, like in terms of like, it's unable to be resolved, I would say is what's the blockage here for this person is their imagination. It's stagnant. Their emotional memory is stagnant. They are not able to close this chapter because they cannot see past or future. They can't see back. They, they are way, way too stuck in the here and now. That's how I would read that. That's how I would use this oracle to help me read that card. Let's do one more with the Morgan Greer. Okay, King of Swords. My gosh, with the court cards. So the King of Swords um, in a negative. So as an obstacle. So the King of Swords as an obstacle. I would probably read this as um, this is not the per, the the. Um, the querent themselves, but an energy around the querent that is keeping them from growing, that is stifling their ability to 
think clearly. Um, yeah. And so how, where can we help this person sort of figure out where that, where that energy exists? Like, where is that energy? Why is that energy happening around them? Why are they unable to think clearly and grow? Uh, and so we will pull the Oracle card to help us and we will get the golden Eagle enlightenment and success. Wow. Okay. Talk about two words that like right off the get go are positive words, right? Enlightenment and success. So reading this reversed is, um, there's a, this, there's a stifling of, um, what is going to help you. Gosh, look, cause you can see this Eagle flying towards the, um, the sun that or the light that's at the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> That's what it is. So, right. So like this energy is coming from the past maybe, or it's coming from someone in their life that is, feels like they're enlightened. Uh, so enlightened that it's like completely making you doubt yourself. You're doubting your ability to think clearly because there's someone around you that is, that seems like, yeah, like they have it all understood and figured out and you are doubting yourself because you, um, because you're not seeing that. Okay. My goodness. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was so much fun. And I don't know that this feels like it's strictly about reversals anymore. It's really like my practicing reading, but I think that was a great test for myself to see, um, to see how I interpret cards in a, in a nuanced way where I can flow from something positive to something negative um, and back you know, depending on what, what, what comes up. I feel like that was a really good, um, that was a really good exercise for me to do. So, uh, yeah. So I hope that you all enjoyed that here. I'm just going to bring the cards back out. Um, I hope that you guys like that. I hope that you found that helpful. Um, and maybe you'll try something like this um, yourself and see if it's something that, you know, would work for you to help you kind of wrap your head around what reversals are, what that idea of having a shadow side to the card um, means. And let me know about that if you do and if this helped you in any way. Um, I had lots of fun doing it. I love stretching, stretching my brain muscles. Anyway, I thank you so much for sticking around with me and I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day.